folks this morning it is 10 a.m it is the 23rd of june and uh, i'm just going to do a market scan i'm going to try and go through it pretty quickly my setup here is the one hour two hour four hours eight hours and daily um i'll tell you what i'm going to do here let me break it down let's go down to 15 minutes uh 30 minutes let's do one hour four hour and daily for now Okay, so a couple of rules for the newbies. If anyone, uh, if you don't know this already, always, always know what the daily is doing. Always. Doesn't matter if I'm trading the five minutes or whatever, but always know uh, what the uh, daily is doing. And uh, so that's, I've kind of broken this up. Also, I'm much more likely to get a sense of, by having more charts on my screen, I'm more, much more likely to get a sense of, um, of kind of what the market conditions are and if I should stay away or not. So starting off here on my list on the left, which is my go-to list. It's not the only stuff that I look at, but it is, it, it, it'll be the first batch of things that I look at. So I'll start off here with the indices. Um, and let's just have a look at what's, uh, what's going on in, in the, so we'll start off with Wall Street, the Dow. Okay. So basically, uh, we've got a swing low. We've got a higher low on the daily. Um, we're still stuck within a range, which is, I discussed in my weekly analysis video. So there is some caution but it is leaning to the upside here. But the idea is, is that because we, we have a lower high on the daily and a higher low now, that we're, uh, that the direction is not as clear and therefore the risk is slightly higher. Okay, this is the same on the S&P. Um, so what I'm doing is if I look here, I'm looking really for conditions that look pretty much like this. There's also a big drop here and a big spike. So that's what I mean by increased volatility. You might get some nice trend, trending moments and then you get an unexpected spike. That's where the danger lies. So if you are trading the lower time frames, you'd be stupid to do it without a stop loss for this exact reason. Okay. Um, so where of that? The the flow of price is more to the upside currently. All right. So just taking note of that, meaning that I'm I should probably be focusing on going long rather than going short, but I should also be prepared for volatility uh the fangs are looking good so that's just the the biggest constituents in the uh nasdaq all right so russell 2000 also looking bullish so that's where i'm going to be looking if i trade i'm looking to buy in those situations so just going through these germany the dax also coming into the high of last week um having broken up through it coming back down to test it so have a look at that hang Seng also looks good so actually so far today as i said this kind of event little earthquake not should not be uh, forgotten about we should keep in mind that could still happen but it looks nice and bullish so far okay so Nikkei they're all the same they're all pretty much the same actually where it will come to light is when the US comes online in about uh, four and a bit hours give or take four hours uh, that's where we'll start to see if the rest of the day is also going to be bullish or if it's going to shift the other way I'm leaning towards the upside at this point at this point in time. So the US dollar basket has headed lower. The daily here is still in an uptrend, but is currently heading lower. It's broken below 97. It failed to reach 98. This is one of the possibilities I'd included um, because there is no clear trend and therefore the market is quite volatile. Um, it's annoying, of course, because it had a really strong downtrend on the daily, then immediately went into an uptrend. And now it's looking as though it might just start going back into that downtrend, which is basically just going to mess up traders who can't, who are just waiting for a trend to settle. Then they look to get in and then the trend changes, which is very frustrating. But that's the currency market for you. Um, not all the time, but it can do that. All right, so euro dollar is looking strong on that basis. Just understand that it is a daily downtrend, which actually better way to look at it is, is it a weekly uptrend? So if we look at a weekly thing, we have an uptrend here. This could be a swing low. It could be. So that could be the idea that we get a much longer term trend unfolding. Uh, and, and we're seeing the early stages of, the, of a weekly retracement. Um, so, okay. So basically that means I'm going to be looking bullish. I'm going to be bullish on those. Cable's not as strong. Aussie dollar, Kiwi are appealing to me. Euro's looking good. They're all looking bullish. Uh, dollar Swissy um, looking nice and bearish. So that looks good. Dollar CAD, let's have a look. Dollar CAD not as good. So Dollar Swissy and Euro dollar actually looking the best today so far. Euro GBP looking bullish. Uh, Euro Aussie. So no, there's uh, nothing here. This is just a mess. There's no money making opportunity. Euro Aussie euro kiwi no uh yeah euro yen looking potentially bullish again same thing that daily trend is down but it's looking quite bearish i mean sorry it's looking quite bullish aside from that so interesting um euro swissy no staying away from that this is just insane euro cad uh, although it's looking bullish and nice on the lower time frames it's it's a nightmare on the daily so just a bad idea 
parallels you immediately a bad idea even though it is beautifully trending on the daily uh, as soon as you start to get into the lower time frames it looks very bad it'll probably improve once it breaks through this level of support um, and then heads down then it'll potentially start trending so one to keep an eye on um, and you can see euro kiwi is a uh, pound kiwi also looking really good in this sense beautiful like lovely lovely this in isolation is just that's a money maker on the daily and maybe on the four hourly but as you start to go lower and lower it starts to swing a lot wilder bigger swings gbp yen actually is in a downtrend and believe it or not looks like it's about to turn around here and potentially start going lower so what i would do in this case is either skip the chart entirely and wait for the daily candle to decide what it wants to do or potentially start looking for to see if we get a downtrend on the one hour is probably safer and then going in line with that pound swissy looking more bearish than bullish for sure it's in a downtrend pound cad this is just terrible Terrible, terrible, terrible. I mean, Aussie Kiwi has gone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, like 12 days of just sideways motion. Aussie Yen looks okay. It's not great. Aussie Swissy, no. Terrible. Aussie CAD, more bullish. That's looking good. Maybe to go long. It looks terrible on the lower time frames, but on the daily, it's looking getting ready. So what I mean by that is that maybe in the next two three days over the next two three days it'll start to trend and then become money maker this looks interesting we've broken through resistance we're coming back to test it could find support and then start climbing the daily is range bound if nothing else so we'll see sure so these pairs were great to trade a while ago they're terrible now swiss yen like the look of that so far on the lower time frames uh cad yen no oh, that's just terrible uh honestly shocking okay gold so gold did manage to break higher from uh, the weekend from Sunday night. Um, so I'm just trying to find my breaks. There we go. So Sunday night break up and it's climbing. It's still struggling. There's just the, basically this price action here is indicative that there's, there's like, there's a shortage of buyers. But the thing is that this is really the ultimate target. So what I'm hoping will happen is it'll start to accumulate buyers and they'll start jumping on board and then it'll start trending and it'll head up to the 1800 level. That uh, four hour looks great. That's really nice and bullish. Um, and the daily looks fine. It's not overextended and it's really a short distance away from that. So I, I'd be very keen. I mean, I'd be really like to see that go up there, but uh, it's the conditions right now are very choppy. So we'll see. Silver is actually also looking a little bit better, but it's still in a downtrend. Crude oil, crude oil is still in, in, in some ways uh, still managing to look bullish. So potentially that'll continue on upwards um sugar was going is is losing its magic it's now starting to run out of steam i find that interesting that gold sugar oils um silver the metals they're starting they're just losing steam it's like there's not much going on currencies are kind of waffling a bit so there's there's a lot of just listlessness in the markets and bitcoin um trying to come back up to this ten thousand level so not much has actually changed since my market analysis videos on sunday um, really just updating on that, but I do there were a couple here that I like to look at pound Aussie has got some future potential if it breaks through that level of support uh, And then starts to move. I think the euro dollar is looking good But keeping in mind it is a downtrend on the daily these lower highs over here. So just caution on that um, And so basically my approach now is is trading in line with the lower time frames is probably where I'm leaning um, with the exception of one of the yen ones, which was Aussie yen or pound yen, where it looks like it's about to shift and change direction. Uh, a couple of the yen ones look like they're about to turn on the lower time frames. The rest of them, I prefer the lower time frames, but with immense caution, whereas in the trends could run out and we'll start to get clarity, I think, when the US comes, uh, comes online a little bit later. So exercising caution. Stop losses, understanding that I want to be focusing on the ones with the strongest trends on the 15, 30 minute and one hour and making sure that I take profit as I go for sure, trying to get to break even.